Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to PHP Programming Lesson 26, and today we're going to look at OOP, Object-Oriented Programming. Specifically, we're going to look at creating classes today. Now, PHP is a scripting or procedural language, and basically there was no OOP available until PHP 5. So for simple sites, uh, OOP, uh, Object-Oriented Program, just overcomplicates things. But when your sites become complex, you definitely need to use Object-Oriented Programming, and for us, we're definitely going to need it. Now, objects groups things into themes and makes them reusable. And here's a summary of what objects will do for you. Objects gives a better code organization and maintainability. They add clarity and reduce complexity. Simple rules allow complex interactions. Code modularity, code reusability. They're well suited for databases and, and can be abstracted. And we're going to find out what all that means. And so you can imagine that like you're in a doctor's office and you have a pad of prescriptions. And so that's just like your class. And each time you need a new prescription, basically you fill out what it is, the symptom and uh, your name, and you just hand that out to different patients as they come in the door. And so essentially you can think of uh, uh, classes as terms of forms. And when you instantiate them, in a sense you hand them out. And so we're going to talk all about that uh, process of instantiation here as we move on. Let's go to the code. So we're back in Eclipse and we're on lesson 26. And we're going to build our first class. And it's very simple to build a class. It only takes two statements. And that's a class statement with the word class, some name, and curly brackets. And with that curly brackets, you'll put both what's called properties and methods. Now, what's a property? A property is just a variable, and a method is just a function. But when you put them in the class, you basically change your names. And so that's why you many times hear me talk about functions and methods interchangeably, because I'm continually working with methods and functions depending on what their environment is. In a class, a function is a method and a variable is a property. So here's our simple class. Now if we run that, nothing will happen because we have to instantiate that class. And so what I'm going to do, basically I have a function inside my class. It's called my hello, and all it does is echoes out my hello world class. So in order to instantiate a class, it's very simple. What you have to do is basically create a variable because you have to capture that class. Then you go new and the name of the class. Now once you've done that, once again, you can do nothing with it. You have to actually run the method inside that class. And the way you do that is just take the name of that variable which you've captured, use this uh, dash greater than sign, and call the method that you create. Now that method has to be public in order to access it. And we're going to talk about what the difference in scope is, what's public and private, and uh, things like that. So I've actually created uh, my class, and I'm going to run my hello. Now what is my hello? And once again, it's the method or function inside that class. And so once I instantiate that class, I can run that function. Now it turns out that I can instantiate a class more than once. So here I've instantiated the class once, and I've instantiated it again. These two are not the same thing. It's like I've torn off a piece of note from my sticky pad and given it to one person and then given it to another. So I've instantiated it twice. And so once again, I can still run, in the, run the hello method. But it's a different hello because it comes from a different instantiation of that class. Let's go ahead and run this and show you how it works. And they go, I've run it twice. And so this my hello world class is from instance one. And this hello my world class is from instance two. So if it becomes confusing, don't worry. As you work with classes more and more, it will make a lot of sense. At first, classes don't make sense. But as you get more and more into reusable objects, you'll certainly come to love them. Now, each class that is created in PHP actually is kept track of. So we actually want to look at a method that allows us to actually see all the classes in PHP. And here it is right here. Let me uncomment this code right here. So I can get all the declared classes in PHP because once again it keeps track of it. Throw it in the variable classes and do a for each loop over those classes and echo out all the classes that PHP is keeping track of. Let's go ahead and do that right now. And here's all the declared classes right here. And we can see at the very bottom, somewhere near the end, I should see my hello world class. And there you see at the very bottom is my hello world. But you see there's a whole bunch of other classes that PHP is using as an inventory of things to do. So you'll be working with many of these classes as you move on. You already have worked with some of them. But you can see there's a lot here. So, that, so you may not necessarily want to work with all these classes and know that your class has been instantiated. So there's some more code that we can use to determine that. So let's go down just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and comment this out because we actually don't want all that code appearing on the screen. But that's one way to actually see all the classes in PHP, and that's get declared classes. Let's go ahead and comment this out. You can actually check to see if your variable, the one that you instantiated, is a member of a certain class. So what I'm going to do is take my variable name, hello world one, and go get underscore class. And then I'm going to say if get hello world 
uh, one is a member of the Hello World class, then Echo is an instance of this class. Otherwise, Echo is not. So once again, using some of those class methods, in this case it's get class. Let's run this and see what we have output it to the screen. And we see right here in the next part of our code, we have instance is from Hello World. So we are moving forward with these different class methods that you'll need as you work with classes in the future. And let's move on to the next part of the lesson. There is something that's very, very, very important in PHP, and that is the use of the word this. And I have a long explanation of what this is. This is a pseudo variable. Okay? It's available when a method is called from within an object in context. Uh, this is a reference to the calling object. What does that mean? And basically that's what it means is when you create a class, if you're going to call something from within the class, not outside the class, from within the class, then you use the variable dollar sign this. And you see this also in Flash Builder and in Flash. Let me just go ahead and just show you an example so you can understand what it means. Let's create another class. And here's a class I call simple class. I actually got this example from php.net. And I'm going to create a public variable. So now let's talk about scope just a little bit. You're starting to see that I'm starting to use the names public and private. Now what public means is that that variable will be accessible outside this class. So if another class looks at that class, it can actually use that variable. Now what the word private does, that scope actually keeps that variable within the class. So if I actually turn this into private, for example, then this variable could only be used within the class. Now that may not make a lot of sense to you yet, but as we move on in these lessons, you're going to see us using these names variable and private quite a bit, and we'll actually be showing you how they work. And I'll so as I go through scope throughout the, the lessons, I'll be uh, making that apparent to you, and I'll be pointing that out. So what I've done here, I've actually created a, what's called a public variable, which is accessible not only to this class, but other classes that might use it. And it's just a string, and it says a default value. And then I created a function within that class. And what I want to do is I want to actually call that variable inside of that function. And the way I do that, since it's inside of the class, is I call it by referencing it through the value this. So once again, inside my function itself, I have echo, dollar sign this, and once again that dash greater than sign var. And I see I'm not using the dollar sign here because I know that var is the uh, property that I'm referencing. So to run this code, once again, I have to create a variable that's going to capture the instance. Then I say new instance, and I've captured that instance. And to run it, I just echo out that instance with my dash greater than sign and run that method within the function. Now that is a public method and actually I've called it public now specifically say that and since it's a public method I can indeed run it and I'm gonna run that method. And when I do I just print out a default value. Not a very robust example but something you need to pay attention to because we're gonna be using these techniques over and over and over again. Now I have one more example I want to show you. So I've created this method called hello world functions and within that I've created a function called hello world and it echoes out hello world from inside the class but it also uses the get underscore class this and what that's going to do is just give you a reference hello world functions back. And so there's a lot of these uh, class methods we've been kind of talking about kind of sketchily. We'll come along in the future and actually formalize this a little bit more and give you a bunch of them at once. And then what I'm going to do inside this particular uh, class, I'm actually create a function. And what the function is going to refer to is the original function I created. So whenever I'm representing something inside a class, I have to use a pseudo word this. And so basically what's going to happen if I run this method, it will echo this out. Or if I run this method, which refers to this method, it will echo out the same thing. So let's go ahead and instantiate that class. So the way to instantiate it is we create a variable called hello there. And then basically just new hello world functions, the name of the class itself. And then I'm going to run both the methods. I'm going to run hello world one, which would give me out that uh, particular uh, output. And then hello world two, which runs the second method, which should give me out the same exact output. Let's go ahead and run this example. And what I do, I get hello from inside this class. Here's a reference, hello world functions. Hello uh, world from inside this class, hello world functions. They both gave me the exact same thing but they were actually two different methods that were run from within inside my class. The first one is the original method I created, and the second one was a reference to that method using the pseudoname this. Very powerful techniques, and we'll be covering all this uh, next time. Just to cover quickly what we went over in this uh, lesson, is that we showed you how to formulate a class.
And to formulate a class, it was very easy. All you had to do was use a keyword class, uh, create your class within curly brackets, and stick methods and properties within that class, which you can reference by instantiating it. So next, we showed you how to instantiate a class. It was fairly easy to do. Just by using a uh, variable and instantiating that class into the variable by using new and the name of the class. And then we showed you how to run the class, which you'll actually be doing over and over again in these lessons, by using its instance name and uh, that dash greater than sign pointing to basically the method that you're going to run or variable you're going to call within that class. And finally, we talked about the powerful pseudo name this and showed you how to use it basically to reference variables and functions within functions. So uh, important stuff, which we'll be using over and over again in the future. Hey, thanks for listening. This is Mike Lively, and I'll see you next time.